Hi, and welcome to Amanda's Book Corner. I'm Amanda, and this is my review of Mona by Polo Oluwiharak. Mona was first published in Spanish in 2019, and earlier this year, 2021, the English translation was published as well. So there are two main reasons why I was drawn to this book. The first is that it follows a character who is Peruvian. My husband is Peruvian, and so I'm always on the lookout for books that are set in Peru or about Peruvian characters or by Peruvian authors. Now the author of this book is actually Argentinian, but I did like that I finally found a book with a proven character in it, because they're far too rare. The second thing that drew me to this book is that it's about an author. I like any books that are about that are about books or writing or reading in some way. Very meta, but I, I do like that kind of theme in the literature that I read. And so I was excited that it was about an author who ends up going to Sweden to potentially win a literary award. So Mona, the titular character, She's a proven author who's based in California, and the book starts off with her waking up kind of disoriented and not really remembering what happened to her. It's clear that she's under the influence of some drugs and maybe alcohol as well, but she remembers in time that she has a flight that she needs to catch that goes over to Sweden to potentially win a prestigious award. And so she gets on the plane and she ends up in Sweden, first in Stockholm, but then they go north and she's with a whole bunch of different authors who are also nominated for the award. And the rest of the book really takes place at this author's convention. And we get to see what goes on in the days leading up to when the award will finally be given. So I'll be upfront with you right now, it's not a plot-driven book. Although I'd, I'd also hesitate to really call it a character-driven book either because I don't feel like Mona's character changes that much throughout the book. And I'll explain why. The format of the book is very much focus on dialogue and speeches that the characters have and give. So if you've ever seen one of those movies that's super, super dialogue heavy, where the point of the movie is really the conversations that characters have with each other and not much else really goes on, this book I would say is kind of like that. On the one hand, we're seeing various different authors from around the world who are nominated going up and giving speeches. A lot of the speeches seem pretty random and they seem to have their own themes that they're focusing on, but I didn't really see the connection to like the bigger picture of the of the story. In addition to these kind of long monologues that these characters are giving, we also see Mona have various and random conversations with the different authors at the event. One thing I will say is that it's very clear that Mona is a highly intelligent person. She speaks several languages, she can talk about a wide variety of different themes. These are themes that you could consider kind of pretentious, like they're trying to be highbrow, but maybe just kind of comes across as trying too hard. But they talk about literature, they talk about language, they make a lot of references to things. And I'll be honest, several, several references went right over my head. I didn't really know what they were talking about, but I was happy to say that there were several references that I did understand. For example, she did mention the Peruvian Nobel Prize winning author Mario Vargas Llosa. There are also several movies and specific books that she mentioned that I was like, hey, I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what that reference is. But like I said, there are also several other things that I was just like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what kind of connection to make because I'm just not familiar with that specific person or book or event. I said already that when the book begins, Mona is kind of in a state of intoxication and that actually continues throughout the entirety of the book. Although the book takes place over the course of several days, maybe about a week, she's continuously vaping and intaking drugs and drinking alcohol. And she's, I feel like she's constantly in a state of intoxication to some degree or another. And it, it's clear that she's trying to numb herself from something or trying to escape from something. I noticed that it seems like she's using drugs, sex, and literature primarily as a way to kind of numb herself to what's going on around her or what she's feeling. And see, see, I think that's something that could have been a point for character growth, but at least for me, I didn't really see her changing in that regard. I think she just kind of stayed intoxicated the entire, the entire novel. And to be fair, the novel is under 200 pages. It's a, it's a pretty short little book, but even so, I didn't really see much change in her behavior and state of being throughout the course of this book. I also mentioned that she's really into sex and I thought it was interesting how the author described it because 
for her, it always comes across as kind of grimy or an escapist and just, it's not aspirational at all. It's definitely something that comes across as problematic or icky or just unfulfilling in some way. And the sexual themes don't end with Mona and her own personal interest in cyber sex and porn and everything. It's interesting how she describes things that are not sexual in a sexual way. So for example, she describes geography in a strangely sexual way. But then on the other hand, she also desexualizes things. For example, this random naked man who is just running around throughout the book, she very much desexualizes him in the ways that she describes him. So I thought that was interesting how she kind of flips the narrative on several different things and people and it, it just makes it feel more kind of confused, more kind of kind of backwards in a certain way. So that random naked man that's running around, that kind of is a good transition into the next thing I noticed about this book. It's just a very strange book and I feel like it was hard to take it seriously and maybe that's the intent. Maybe it's not meant to be taken seriously. I think the author tries and occasionally does succeed at making it a very satirical and sardonic and sarcastic and cynical, even like morbidly funny. I think that is the vibe I got from the book. And I think on the one hand, she does succeed at that throughout the book. But on the other hand, I feel like a lot of it just kind of was a miss for me. And it started to feel more and more tedious the further I got into the book. I have to admit, I ended up being more and more irritated the, the more the book went on because I just, I wasn't seeing any evolution with the plot or with the characters. It kind of just seemed pretty depressing to be honest. And throughout the book, we see how Mona is definitely, she, her mind is kind of uh, repressing a very bad memory of whatever happened right before she came here. And I was intrigued by what that would be and how, how that would work out. I just, I feel like the, answer, the reveal of that came too late in the book and not enough was done with it. And instead we got a very strange and random ending. It almost felt like a shift in genre by the end. I'm still not really sure what to make of it. It was, it was kind of weird. So I had high hopes for this book. I was definitely interested in it for the reasons I mentioned before. And I guess I was just kind of disappointed by the book in the end. I just don't think it was the right book for me, or maybe I wasn't the right target audience for this book. Maybe I didn't get it, or maybe I, I don't know, I just, I didn't really enjoy it to be honest. Which I'm sad to say, but it's true. So in the end, I gave this book two stars. So I hope you enjoyed this book review video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you did like the book and want to debate about why you thought it was good, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you did like about it and perhaps what I missed. I'll be publishing more book reviews like this one at least once or twice a week because I do read a fair amount of books. And in the coming months, I'll also start doing additional content as well, so you don't want to miss that. To make sure that you don't miss it, please ring that bell so you get all my notifications of new videos. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!